a once powerful Yoshi. Right now, you're on the threshold of an amazing adventure. Don't you fucking tell me to speak. I'm not your fucking trained dog. <sighs> Asshole. Speak. Come on. <clears throat> Shut the fuck up. Uh, anyway. Hello, Bear. Needle here. We are back again on this beautiful Thursday night <clears throat> I wouldn't be mean to you if you didn't deserve it you need you need to look inward at your own behavior <clears throat> beautiful Thursday night um, coming on some coming off some very hot news stories this week that I need not uh, reiterate except for the fact that uh, Queer Duck is involved I don't want to get into it but Queer Duck was relevant in ways you might not expect recently anyway what are we doing? <clears throat> what are we doing? I have something very special something very nice and beautiful and funny and special and it's not just me or my puppet whoops we need to see the beautiful puppet don't hide behind me beautiful puppet I love you too much no um, I have found a Walt Disney World Travel Channel documentary from 2002 um, the reason I wanted to watch it is because that's over 20 years ago and, and a lot can change in 20 years now I understand that probably a lot of people here aren't as into the theme park shit as I am I am a little bit of an anomaly even after fucking defunct land came around I, I had been into this shit long before that guy um, <clears throat> but I love these I love the stupid shit I love stupid documentaries I love Walt Disney World Resort um, <laughs> so yeah I wanted to do this I think it'll be fun 2002 was a really silly year it was wasn't it very uh, silly vibe in the Americas in 2002. Everyone was feeling a little bit silly. Anyway. Let's just fucking crack right in. Why not? How's the volume? Is the volume okay? Destination USA. Mouse? I know Mouse. Oh, and I didn't ever put chat on screen. Whoops. Whoops. There we go. How's that? Do I need to go louder? 
go inside their fantasy world and uncover the incredible story of what makes Walt Disney World tick. Watch as we reveal <coughs> the secrets to their success. And explore okay, good, the good, 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 good. Parks and attractions. And get a sneak peek at Disney's Ooh, newest monkey. Ride. We're going behind the scenes and we've got exclusive now, I don't footage that has never been seen Remember before. where in the timeline the of Walt world Disney of World this Orlando is. Empire, I reveal some of Disney's best God, secrets. what parks were all the parks open? Disney World Resort. Oh, did Hollywood scenes. Studios or Animal Kingdom open first? It was an animal. Animal Kingdom's the newest park, isn't it? Is it? Walt Disney it's got to be. These I'm not looking words up. evoke images that most everyone has seen or experienced. Oh, damn it. A world of fantasy and make believe. It is a complete escape from reality. I guess we're not going to get the quality that it The is. most popular vacation destination on Earth. the Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. Never going to be like this. Joe Road. Dream about it. The competition. Oh, a spooky dinosaur. A bit of bit of a bit of small uh, lore for non-Disney fans. Joe Road is the guy who made Animal Kingdom, basically. And fucking basically built it from the ground up. It was his vision. And then they killed it. Vision studies it. No one has ever been like they kill everything. Able to duplicate it. They killed that too. That, ju that scene we were just watching. No, Joe Rode did not think it. That was <clears throat> was it. Joe Rody? It's it's Joe Rody. It's definitely Joe Rody. He was not thinking Zoo. He wanted. He wanted. He was thinking something bigger than Zoo, better than Zoo. So Joe what Rode. makes Walt Disney World number one? Disney is held <laughs> to a higher standard because Disney. No, is wrong guy. Holding itself to a higher. Who was that? Who was that? Dave Downing, travel journalist. What does that say? Folgers? The coffee people? Is held to a higher standard because Disney started out holding itself to a higher standard. How do they keep people coming? I don't know if that's the reason. I'm gonna stop pausing, I'm sorry. The expectations of people there he is again. Disney are probably higher than when they do anything Fuck was else that? In, the, in their life. Was that BMX bikes? The real story of Walt Disney World. I don't remember no Walt BMX Disney bikes World at Walt Disney, Disney World. The, the number one destination for uh, tourism. <gasps> oh my god, that's not fun. that's not even Joe Rody. Oh my what? Tim O'Brien, senior editor of Amusement Business magazine. Okay, to be fair. I'm not good with faces. I'm pretty bad with faces. And I'm even worse with faces when it's 480p recorded VCR footage. <coughs> a VHS tape footage put onto a computer.com. <coughs> Secondly, uh, Joe Rody is a very distinctive looking guy. He's got this kind of same hair color, he's got the earrings, and he's got the long fucking ponytail. Not every guy has that kind of thing. So you can see why when the fucking Disney World documentary comes on and they show the fucking weirdo guy. I'm like, oh, I know that weirdo guy. But it's not. It's a, it's a different weirdo guy. The, the number one destination for uh, tourism in the entire world. Four theme parks. I don't know if that's true. Parks, 18 resorts. How many? Sorry, how many? World. Four theme parks. Three water park. Ah, oh, fuck. Was River Country still around? River Country is the shit they demolished. I mean, even even like most people know River Country, don't they? Didn't Defunct Land talk about River Country? Eighteen resort hotels and more visitors than the any point other is, place on Earth. There were like there were like brain eating brain eating amoebas in the water, and they couldn't do it anymore. They had they had to get rid of it. And then they didn't have any more natural lake water parks. Well, not, I guess, I guess the lagoon's not natural. It's man-made, 47 but. square miles of Orlando, Florida. It's close, natural enough for the fucking amoebas to get in. Fantasy. 
and adults spend millions to make it come true. Florida, baby. I think going to Walt Disney World has become a rite of passage for American children. And I think that once they get grown up I think and have that's their kind own of children. I think that's kind of a fucked up thing to say. A rite of passage. I don't know. I mean, what if you live in, like, Montana? What if you're a poor kid in Montana? You're not going to fucking Disney World as a kid. You'll be lucky. <coughs> you'll be lucky if you go when you're f 30 years old, and then it won't be nearly as good. Bring that they're gonna bring them back. But is Walt Disney World just for kids? It doesn't matter what's going on in the rest of the world. You forget about all of it when you're here. Everybody's 10 years old. Oh. Well, you're not a fucking American, okay? So we're not even talking about you. I've always been impressed every time I've come here by how big it is and how, how much it changes every time I come. The place is absolutely huge. Each time there's always a new park. We like Disney so much that we put a monorail system that runs around the entire perimeter of our house, complete with a contemporary hotel and Spaceship Earth. We came on Dedication Day, October 25th, 1970. And Spaceship Earth. <coughs> I wanted to do this once. The entire perimeter of our house. I admit, I wanted to do this once. There was a point in time when I wanted to get one of those uh, little mon little uh, monorail play sets. Get a long ass track for it, put a little shelf up, and have it just go around the perimeter of my room all the time. But the problem is those play sets are... <laughs> Maybe a little bit I still do. The problem is those play sets are toys. And the problem with toys, especially Walt Disney World toys, and kind of just Disney toys in general, they're god-awful. Like, I don't know if you've looked at them closely recently, but every, t but every time Disney has a new movie, they release the same kind of shit. And it's always just fucking playset of shitty little non-articulated plastic figures. They don't even really look like the characters. I mean, they kind of look like, but they're kind of fucked up. You know what I mean. And they're just bad. Hang on. Fuck. Fuck. Disney movie playset. Here we go. Here's here's something. Here we go. <clears throat> See, look at this. Come on. Look at this. This is a promotional image and it still kind of looks like shit. And look at just like all this plastic, this big fucking chunky plastic. Just, I don't like harping on the plastic thing. I really don't. But. I remember the Zootopia ones looked really bad. Like, the Zootopia ones looked like dog shit. Zootopia playset. I'm gonna get all these ads that are like, Oh, you want, you, you want Disney toys? Disney toys? This is kind of cute. Disney do This is kind of cute. I don't know why it's uh, Judy Hopps and the Cheshire Cat, but it's kind of cute. One star. Yeah, see? Look at this. Look at this thing up here. Like, look at his fucking, like, ugh. Look at this. It's bad. What the fuck is it? What the fuck is this thing? What, what is what is? It's like a little. What, what is it? It's got like a little hat on. Oh God! I was so dis. Oh God! See, look at how bad these look. See, look at this. Look at the paint application on them. It's all this splotchy ass paint. 
I don't think these were the color of the uniforms in the movie. Weren't they, like, blue? Can't even get that shit right. No more, no more, no more. We're, we're not even five minutes in. We got to run. We got to run. The Contemporary Hotel and Spaceship Earth. We, we came on Dedication Day, October 25th, 1971. And we've come practically every month since that time. So that's been at least 400 times or more. Pardon? But how did it all begin? Sorry, I was muting my mic so I could do something, but no Walt Disney World. 400 only every month from where? So that's been at 1971, and we've come practically every month since that time, so that's been at least 400 times or more. Who is, where are these people from? I hope to God they're from Florida. But the fact that they say, we go once a month, makes me think, maybe not. Because if you were close by, you'd you'd go you'd go more often, wouldn't you? S especially if you had like, were they? Of course, they were selling the, uh, you know, year pass holders thing in two thousand two. Why would they not? Of course, they were doing that. Oh God! But how did it all begin? Oh, Once upon a time, there was no Walt Disney World. There was only California's Disneyland. <laughs> Always. <laughs> On the first day, God said, let there be light. And then he said, let there be Disneyland next. When Disneyland opened in 1955, there was nothing like it. It was an escape from the carnivals and sideshows of the day. Families were safe at Disneyland. Disneyland was completely an original concept. It Safe took you away from the, from the world as you knew it and transported you to a different place. Oh, God. Critics no, don't do it. It took you away from the no, world. No, don't go to the Titanic. No. Critics predicted failure, but the public disagreed, and they came in droves. Today it's different, but My in the 50s, be funny the park was week. surrounded by tacky restaurants and cheap hotels. So I gotta take Harbor it while I can get it. Had become just a neon jungle of terrible signs and Marty Sklar. You see that guy's name? Marty Sklar. It wasn't Skyler, it was Sklar. Mr. Sklar. I'm just a neon. Wasn't he the villain in the Lion King? Signs, and Walt hated it because it was the way people came to the entrance to Disneyland. And Peggy was got mad down at Disneyland, and I said, if we go out Yeah, again, fuck said, California. Don't go there. Come, 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 come down here to Florida. And Disney scoured the country for a place to start over. <laughs> the Disney entourage was flying over Central a Florida, and Walt disaster. looked down, and he saw the crisscross. Another guy with a weird last name. Did you see that? The Disney entourage was flying over Central. Richard Fogel. Ooh. Fogel. Oh. Florida and Walt looked down and he saw the crisscross of I-4 and Florida's turnpike and he said that's it that's where we go to prevent another neon jungle Walt knew he needed to buy a lot of land and if word got out the price of that land would skyrocket he had to keep it secret special operatives but were hired didn't. to oversee this covert mission people found they were out able to stay under the radar and purchased more than 27,000 acres using no false people identities. found out they didn't created they? five dummy corporations that bought the oh, land so that people I don't give a shit Central about Florida the history of it. I give a shit about this take place could not tell that it was know. the Walt Disney Company that was behind these land purchases. <coughs> shit that's fun. 65 Disney's like cover was coasters. blown and land prices jumped from $200 an acre to $1,000. There, yeah, there it is. There Watching it is. This take place that's what I was talking about. That it was the Walt Disney they did Company get found that out was eventually. behind these land purchases. In 1965 Disney's cover was blown, and land prices jumped from $200 an acre to $1,000 virtually overnight. This is where the early planning is taking place for our so-called uh, Disney World project. Walt never saw his dream realized. He died in December of 1966. Rip and when piss. Walt died, I think it, it really uh, slowed us down quite a bit. The loss of Walt Disney was a serious <laughs> blow to the company. <laughs> they look like Without anime Walt's guidance, right. the first Florida theme park, the Magic Kingdom, would be modeled after Disneyland. 
And I think of Disneyland in California as charming. And the one oh, in Tony Florida Baxter. Is That's a name. That's a name I know. Obviously, they had the land, and uh, there was no Harbor Boulevard 10 feet to the side of Tomorrowland. Turning Florida Swampland into a magic kingdom was nothing short of impossible. Thousands of construction workers labored day and night. It was one of the world's largest private construction projects. And with so much land, they were able to get creative. We wanted to elevate the whole magic kingdom so you could see it from a distance away. You won't notice it when you enter the park. But when you're in the Magic Kingdom, you're actually a full 14 feet above the ground. So what's going on below the surface? In one misstep and you're on fucking level, toast, all the servicing bitch. Is done and all the employees come to work and distribute no, out into the park. While really the guests like are on the upper level where, you know, all the guest activities and the magic unfold. October of 1971. The moment arrived. Walt Disney World... Do you really need all seven dwarves? I don't think you need all. I don't think you need all seven of them. I think just maybe one or two. Like maybe just two dwarves, and maybe you could get something else in here. October of 1971. I don't know what else. The moment arrived. Like maybe the raccoon Walt from Disney Pocahontas. Disney World opened to the public. Disney was ready, but where were the crowds? <laughs> hey, the Disney Opening catacombs. Day, October oh, 1971 was. Uh, a very frightening extremely necessary for all of us because the word part got the out park. that there were going to be mobs of people and you couldn't get there on the roads after the rocky start attendance took off but did they misjudge their audience yeah what do you mean no fucking 1000 cast off characters you got one here you got one here 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 you get the pigs in there why didn't you get the fucking little pigs in there why didn't you get the big bad wolf in there this was like 1970. The bitches loved the Three Little Pigs. Still, that was like th that was like their Marvel movie. I, think most of I don't know when Pocahontas fucking came out. People, we quickly realized that it was the same audience that we were already drawing to Disneyland, and that was the family audience. Listen, fuck you. Bambi had a raccoon in it, probably. Get the Bambi raccoon. Through the years, the Magic Kingdom grew. New rides and attractions were added. According to Amusement Business Magazine, yes, get into the, the meat of it. Is now I want to see cool, something US cool. It's dead. Splash Mountain's is dead unique. now. Five themed lands surround a central it's dead. Hub. Adventureland, Frontierland, Tomorrowland, Fantasyland, and Liberty Square. They seem random, but they're not. They were themed to promote Disney's films <laughs> and TV shows. On television, Uncle Walt showed every kid Don't growing up in America the adventures of Davy Crockett. Don't give a kid a gun. And the adventures of the African lion for Adventureland. The lands connect to the hub and radiate out like the spokes of a wheel. Now, most theme parks follow Disney's design. Near the center of the hub, one of the most regular... Hey, Liberty Square is still fucking around. And it's not really Americana, so it is so much it is like a little colonial village thing. Recognizable symbols like they got, the a, world, they got like a stocks Cinderella and everything. Castle. At 189 it's where the feet, is. it can be seen from miles away. So, how many stones did it take to build this princess's palace? A couple None. of them. It may look like stone, this princess's palace. None. Oh. Didn't actually take in. Probably took, probably took, one, probably took one stone somewhere in it. It may look like stone, but it's actually a mountain of steel and fiberglass. It's made out of the bones of old the cast members. Thing here is that we cast have members who couldn't cut it. In Central Florida, so things have to be built to standards that will withstand hurricanes. Tall tales surround many castles. Cinderella's is no exception. Some say the spires can be removed in the event of a hurricane. They're wrong. But the castle hides some secrets that are true. Okay, I'm glad. Okay. If it doesn't say the secret, I think it's going to mention. 
but I, it has to. One That's like that the big castle secret. There actually was going to be an apartment for Walt Disney and his family inside the castle. The room was built, but of course, Walt Disney passed away before the Magic Kingdom yeah. opened, so it was used for many years by the telephone operators here at Walt Disney World. Every what? day. No, there's like a little, uh, there's like a little, there's like a little, uh, a little suite in there where you can stay. You can't, like, buy it or anything. It's too special for that, obviously. But I think they've done, like, sweepstakes where you can win a knife, a knife in the castle. Thousands of visitors. Which seems like a liability. What, what if you get out? What if you get out and do, uh, do weird shit around the park? It'd be fucked up if, if you weren't allowed out. If they said, okay, you're not allowed to leave the park till, till dawn. What if you had a medical emergency? What what if even a non medical emergency? What if you just wanted to get the fuck out of there? They they couldn't just form the Magic Kingdom. The first thing they see, Main Street it's USA. It's got a bathroom in there. You don't gotta worry about it. This theme park version of early America is modeled after Walt's childhood town of Marceline, Missouri. The shops on Main Street would be right at home in Hollywood. Why? They're built like film sets. The buildings on Main Street are full scale at the bottom, and then they get a little bit smaller as they go up higher, and that's important because to have a three-story <laughs> plus building here on Main Street... In What's it fucking say on the Liberty Square other, Wikipedia page? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, um... <clears throat> there's a big, like, brown streak in the pavement over there. That people used to say it, or probably still say it, that it was supposed to be like piss and shit and shit. <laughs> and shit and shit. Uh, because there was no, you know, indoor plumbing. <clears throat> but I think it's, uh, I think it's supposed, to, supposed to represent a river. I don't say that, that doesn't mean that at all. It's supposed to be a river. Life would really be huge in scale maybe? to the rest of the parks. Magic Kingdom is Walt Disney's legacy. It's a small world. Peter Pan's flight and the Jungle Cruise are all his creations. The last attraction Walt influenced? The Haunted Mansion. Poggers, my favorite. Okay. How long into this segment until they say the words? Pepper's ghost. In the haunted mansion, doom buggies take visitors on a spine-chilling journey. Now don't close your eyes and don't try to hide. Within these walls are some of Disney's oldest and best special effects. A disembodied head floats in a crystal ball. Ghosts haunt creepy corridors. And then there is one of Disney's best say it. kept secrets. Come on, say it. The ghosts in the dining room. Okay, that's so bullshit. Everybody knows how the fucking dining room ghosts are done. You people know how the dining room ghosts are done, don't you? Like, you're not fucking s stupid scene park nerds like I am. You know how they do it, don't you? No! Not dead people. No! <laughs> no! No, this is... This is, this is, this is. <laughs> the ghosts have been mystifying visitors Watch and for learn. years. But the technology you to heretics. create them is pretty simple. You Philistines. In the Mansion, we have several special effects. And a lot of those are based on uh, techniques that were developed by magicians years ago in parlor tricks, reflections in glass, and, and all things that have been around since... You know, long, long, long before Disney was designing attractions. We spin our own webs. We dust the cobwebs as well. And Stop we have to make sure about cobwebs. that our custodial crew knows don't clean the cobwebs and please don't <laughs> dust the dust. After 30 years... Disney did summon the devil, but it was in, it was in Mr. Toad's wild ride, not in this the one. The haunted mansion still packs him in. I think people come back to the Haunted Mansion for a couple of reasons. So one is, is it has You're not going to fucking say it. And another reason They're not even going to fucking explain it. Details into it. You can ride this attraction many times and I'm going to have to explain it to you people. Before. But how does it all work? 
The spooks okay, in the haunted God. mansion are all controlled from a top seat. <coughs> yeah, I thought they were. I thought that I thought they were gonna fucking cut the segment here and say, "Okay, move on." If that was a haunted mansion, I wouldn't fucking put it past this kind of thing. Location. Our cameras were granted a very rare look into this highly sensitive and wow. restricted area. The digital animation control systems, or DAX. DAX is the nerve center oh, electronically Dax. of the park. More I than 1,100 robotic Dax. figures called audio animatronics and 700 soundtracks are all controlled from here. This is the brains of the Magic Kingdom. You've got a lot of havoc in cabinet, here. All the creatures of the haunted mansion. This contains all of the sounds throughout the attraction from end to end. This is a raven from the graveyard scene. Here. And you know that every time someone rides this ride, <coughs> they gotta have someone standing at this machine with a little camera, pressing the buttons at the exact right time. And if they fuck it up, they, their, pay, their pay gets docked. If you fuck it up, it comes out of your paycheck. They, go, they have a very high turnover rate of ride operators. There are some cats from the graveyard. And, of course, one that everyone will recognize. It's not true. I need, I, need, I need to clarify that's not true. Recognize the howling dog. Because I, He's on the outside. It sounds like it could potentially be real <laughs> in some horrible fucking universe, which I think might be this one. They also bring Disney characters to life in the Daily Parade. Despite tired feet and the sometimes sweltering heat... It didn't even talk about it. Didn't even talk about the ballroom ghosts. No, I gotta fucking do it. Okay. Here's how they do it. There's an illusion called pepper... Mir yes, mirrors, mirrors. Yes, mirrors. All, everything, that whole scene you see with all those uh, spinning, dancing figures... As you're going by it, that's directly below you. And what you see is its reflection, you know, in the mirror. So it looks like they're all ghostly. But but they're real. And they're below you. People line up and it's called Pepper's Ghost. To catch the parade. And they the use it a lot of places. Makes Main Street come alive. Our guests expect a, a parade every day. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at the more than come alive. Our guests Look expect to parade every asses on day. those. People things. wait for the parade. parade they do Main look Street a little a little dick like, but I'm more interested in their like parade every day. Dumpings. People. Look at them. Those are some <laughs> sausage party. Shut up. For the party. <laughs> sausage party mascot. Shut more up. Stop it. 100 performers, <laughs> Stop it. float drivers and technicians bring it to life every day of the year. <laughs> so shake it. Buried beneath the street is a top secret tracking system that controls the speed of the floats. The core of the tracking system. They got a big magnet down there. Our pucks or RFIDs. What we have is about 300 of these actually embedded in the pavement on the street. What happens is the float travels down the street, dries over these, scans it, sort of like a barcode at the grocery store type of system. <laughs> in a split second, the computer at Dax is alerted. I bet there'll never be a horrible fire accident in this on this street. Never ever. These floats are a cutting-edge collection of mechanical wizardry. To be fair, this is a completely different a parade than that drive one. System, high-powered sound system, and onboard air conditioning. Each float is a mini rolling theater. We also have an individual computer Hot. on each float that does all the programming. Tells guy's all name the was Hot. when to turn on, when to turn Out. off, when the turntables rotate, when the turntables stop. When it comes to entertainment at Walt Disney World, the Main Street Parade is the tip of the iceberg. That oh shit, whoops. That's Animal Kingdom, you fucker. And no, they can't. They can't make a normal parade car. It's they're not allowed. More than 1,700 performers Legal. take to the stage every day. I think we're the largest producer and creator and performer of entertainment that happens on a regular basis every day in the world. I don't know if that's true. Oh, that was the Tarzan show. Fuck, that's what that was. Oh, the Tarzan show did have BMX bikes. Fuck. I never saw the Tarzan. New theme park. 
Epcot makes its mark on the world with Disney's fastest and most intense ride Ep was just the beginning. Coming up next. I don't like it. I really don't like this thing. I don't know where in the park it is. I don't remember where this is. But I can only hope to God that today it's fucking dismantled. Radical new theme park. Epcot makes its mark on the world with Disney's fastest and most intense rides ever. Coming up okay, next, just one more thing. Just one more thing. Radical one more new thing. theme park. Epcot. People got so mad about this. About the uh, about the little little wands that says Epcot. Well, they put that there for like the park's anniversary or something, and it was only supposed to be there for a year, but they kept it, and everybody hated it. They were like, "Fucking take down the wand! It sucks!" And they said, "No, no, no! We we, we keep the we keep the wand. It's nice." I forget when they eventually did take it down, but I don't I don't mind it. I think it's okay. I think it's whimsical, but I think I think the fact that it's whimsical is what people don't like about it. It makes its mark on the world with Disney's fastest and most intense rides ever. <laughs> <clears throat> and later, it's Disney's scariest creation. Are you brave enough to ride? Disney's theme park of the future, when we come back. Yeah, yeah, if it says 2000. Oh. Destination USA is brought to you by Clorox Home Care Products. For a clean and healthy Everybody home, say thank you, Clorox. Clorox. Technology today means a brighter tomorrow. Oh my god, it's got commercials? In the century, a revolutionary non-stick surface was invented called Teflon. I'm watching the commercials. I'm watching the commercials. This is cool. I like the com I like I like old commercials. Oh, this just might be Clorox. Observe. Dirt doesn't stick. So your bathroom stays cleaner, longer. Clorox and Teflon. Once again, Clorox and Teflon. Over 30 million visitors come to Vegas each year. Celebrities, high rollers, and, and they all go to see one guy. Everyone trying to hit it big and Germa 985. Extra, extra large. No matter what group you fall under, we'll show you how to tip the odds in your favor. Whether it's winning at blackjack or scoring this suite for free. The secret to making the most of this town isn't about the game you choose to play, but how well you play the game. It all starts with What's New Vegas 2004, tomorrow at 8 on the Travel Channel. 2004? I thought it was only 2002. What year is it? When you're getting up to 10% back, the whole world seems to be telling you about it. <clears throat> Epcot's actually the name of the park. Uh, the attraction is called the Spaceship Earth. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't think there's a house. I don't think there's like a little house in it. I think that's the castle, yeah, which is a, which is a completely different park. <laughs> but reachable by the, by the uh, convenient monorail system. Tomorrowland is in the Magic Kingdom. Now through June, it's it's uh, <coughs> it's like it's a it's a little late. Ten percent cashback bonus award. Ten percent. But there's a lot of a lot of overlap between uh, the front part of Epcot and Tomorrowland. Everything. To sign up for this program, card members must visit discovercard.com or call one eight hundred four seven five nine one six one. Discover Card. It pays to discover. Next time you dive into bed, stop and ask yourself. Are your sheets really clean? If you didn't use Clorox bleach, Who you're cares? diving into body soil. The yucky stuff detergent alone can't get out. Clorox I don't give a shit. Away the body soil detergent leaves inside. That's just part of me. There's just little Clorox bits of me bleach. on there. The I don't mind. Clean. It's me. And for your colors, use Clorox too. <laughs> you smell of bleach. Uh, <laughs> really gets me to sleep at night, you know? Oh, this is an Orlando commercial. Oh my god. Oh god, they are not... They aren't using Frankenstein and Marilyn Monroe to advertise their park anymore. Oh, whatever the fuck this is. Universal 
Orlando Resort, a vacation from the ordinary. Fairy tales and pixie dust not quite your thing. Log on to Universal Orlando. Jesus. For a vacation Come on. That'll blow your you just, you're gonna be a dick for no reason? This is a Disney documentary. Come on. Mind. Be nice. Mm, fast food. In America, it's a way of life. But we're not just talking burgers and fries. How about a lobster on the go or Sushi Express? Still not impressed? What about a gourmet meal served a la conveyor I belt? I don't really Whatever think your of taste, Tracy Gallagher has the place to get sushi it quick. Fast Remember, food. it's not just about the drive through anymore. Is. Catch the premiere of Fantastic Fast Foods Tuesday at 8, only on the Travel Channel. We're back with Destination USA. <coughs> Thank only God. On the Travel Channel. Theme parks, three water parks, dozens of hotels. This is Walt Disney World. For 11 years straight, the Magic Kingdom was the only theme park at Walt Disney World. The success of this park inspired Disney chiefs to tackle another, Epcot. Yay, Epcot. That's my favorite. was Walt's vision for a Disney-fied utopian city of the future. Mm -hmm. but the most exciting, the far, the most important to make product a for the Florida town. project will be our experimental it's prototype city of tomorrow. We call it Epcot. The Imagineers struggled. How would they build Walt's city of tomorrow? Eventually, the realization... Yeah, let's get that these you fucking, you know, theme park engineers. To make a little, to make like a little town, a little town where people can live, forever. Not just visit for the day, live there, for the rest of their lives. You can't have people living and working in the same community that people are coming through. It was up to Disney's Imagineers to decide Fucking what obviously. Epcot would be. Some wanted a technology showcase of the future. Others voted for a permanent World's Fair. Future World and World Showcase were concepts for two different a glorious Nippon. Then, in one pivotal moment, it all came together. One day, Marty got on one model and John got on another and they literally pushed <laughs> them together and that became Epcot. Communications, energy, transportation, farming. These were the subjects of the attractions Two that made up future world. Two out of four of those things have world. gone. For World Showcase, picture-perfect pavilions representing various <laughs> world countries showcase. were created with a fanatical attention to detail. Mexico, China, France, and Germany were among the first. We didn't want to focus on one part of the globe as much as to have a sampling of cultures from around the world. And I think we were very successful, actually, in creating architectural icons that really... That guy's name was Barry Brave. Why do all these people have weird-ass names? ...evoke the majesty of these countries. At 260 acres, Epcot was more than twice the size of the Magic Kingdom. Wow. And an enormous risk no. for Walt Disney World. A decade of planning, three years of construction, it's not really three thousand world designers, and four thousand construction workers, and this was only the beginning. Fifty-four million cubic feet of dirt had to be moved, and the clock was ticking. By the end of the first year of operation, the total cost of Epcot was a reported one billion dollars. It was an amazing mm -hmm. time. Wonder, we really felt like we were doing something that no one had ever done before. We no, felt like we really were reinventing um, this notion of a World's Fair or a theme park or a city of tomorrow and doing something totally different. It was, it was exciting. Great time. Epcot needed an icon, its own Cinderella castle. But a French chateau in a city of tomorrow wasn't going to cut it. The solution? A colossal geodesic sphere called Spaceship Earth. At 180 feet high... <clears throat> it's not actually a sphere. Uh, the bottom's cut off a little bit, so it's not a sphere. It's, it's, a, it's technically a dome. It's not a sphere. And more than 16 million pounds, there's nothing else like it. This is the first geodesic sphere that ever was no, it's a dome. lifted off the ground. 
all of them had been domes for a good reason. Nobody could figure out how to complete okay, that Carol. dome, that, that hemisphere, and turn it into a full sphere. So you were around then. October 1982. There goes a balloon to be eaten a by some sea turtles. Disneyland in the Magic Kingdom. No one knew how the public would react. When they first Thanks for opened, coming they had a <coughs> to check my audio and shit. Always appreciate it, it man. Was. And a lot of people said, all this is just a world's fair. And the Disney officials kept saying, no, it's much, much All more. the world's My niece affair. was disappointed when she went to Epcot because she wanted the rides. She didn't want to learn about how hydroponic plants are grown. <laughs> well, I think the notion that Epcot is Fucking, yeah, place. obviously. <laughs> I can't believe they were surprised like that. They were surprised by that. Like, why? What do you mean they want to ride the pirate rides? We're teaching them about bananas. We got a Chiquita sponsorship to teach people about bananas. And no one wants to see it. It's always kind of been a, a little bit of a challenge for it. You know, it's always been like, oh, gee, do I really want to get educated on my vacation? Walt it's not actually World that knew Epcot had to change. And it did. <laughs> world's largest man-made Even back ocean in the day, environment. An interactive technology showcase Dead. and a 3D special effects show kept the turn... Interventions is dead. It, it was one of the last fucking... last few bastions of the classic Epcot, and it's dead. They killed it. I f they killed it for, for, for no reason. They said the construction was going to be done in a couple years. It's been six. And it's not even close to being done. I'm so mad about what they did to Epcot. Styles turning, but it wasn't enough. I know no one gives Epcot a shit. Was missing an but I'm so mad. Ingredient. Through the years, they realized Shit's been that the, uh, the people that come to Disney wanted thrill rides. I don't. One of Epcot's early attractions, the World of Motion, was ready for a facelift. Its sponsor, General Motors, wanted a change. High-level meetings with Disney. I and guess Sue. this is just when the question: How to turn World of Motion got turned into test track. Into a white knuckle thrill ride. And one of the things that really struck us was the testing grounds, the proving grounds, where they put the cars through these torture tests. We said this. White knuckle thrill ride is a little bit of an overstatement for what test track is. It's kind, it's it's kind of just driving on a freeway with the hood down. This is really They're, fascinating. Yeah, the hood down. Okay, that could be hood. this Proof? Gatebuster track. Proof hood. Test track puts you through all the punishing tests vehicles go through before production. There are teeth shattering suspension tests, breath catching brake tests. It's not even like this anymore. They changed it recently. The gut wrenching finale? Yeah, they crashed the rides with kids in it. That's basically it. And my favorite part of the ride was the absolutely fucking pointless part production. where they sent you, sent you through the heat tunnel and the cold tunnel <clears throat> to be like, let's see how your vehicle performs in different temperatures. And you go like five miles an hour through there. Because there was no point to it except to to just make you uncomfortable. Breath catching brake tests. That's probably why they took it up. And hot and cold climate tests. <laughs> the gut wrenching finale, a 65 mile an hour speed test. The result, the fastest ride at Walt Disney World. Test track put Epcot on every <laughs> thrill seeker's must see list. I like test track because you can do things there that you can't do on the road. <laughs> if they weren't cowards, they'd fucking turn the temperature up to boiling on this thing, too. But they're worried about lawsuits or whatever the fuck. As if those are real. A one of a kind attraction that just may be redefining thrill rides by giving passengers a realistic rocket launch and an exhilarating space flight training experience. <clears throat> if you dream to be an astronaut or you want to. Mission Space is a ride that people hated so much. They had to, like, make another version of it that doesn't make you fucking vomit. Because <laughs> all Mission Space is, I'll tell you what it is. It's one of those things they put the astronauts in and make them spin around real fast so they get used to the G-forces. That's all it is. And they don't tell you that. 
They're like, yeah, man, you're gonna go to space, you're gonna get to press the buttons, it's gonna be awesome! And then we're gonna spin you around really fucking fast. And you're not gonna know what's fucking happening, because we're not gonna tell you. And it's great! It's not great. No, what is I don't like that ride. Right. I don't like spinning. It's almost a sensory overload experience when those rockets ignite and you start to lift off of the Earth's surface. Your body feels pushed back into the seat. You can sometimes even feel your cheeks being pulled back. The entire capsule is shaking and rumbling, and you start to see those clouds go by as, as you race off into space. The mission, if you choose to accept, is an immersive journey to the Red Planet. But this space odyssey isn't for the faint of heart. Some say Mission Space is the most intense thrill ride they've ever experienced. Because it's one of those fucking G4 things. You can't even feel your hands, it's great. You can't, what did you say? He said you can't feel your hands? Most intense thrill ride they've ever experienced. As soon as you get up in the air, your hands are like, you can't even feel your hands, it's great. But you need those. <laughs> Embolism ride. Basically, yeah, but... It's not a good idea to advertise your ride with your hand goes... Your hands go numb. Because the whole... What is the whole point of this ride? Is they give each person on board, like, a little task to do. Like, this person, you gotta press the engine button. Or this person, you gotta press the brake button. How are you supposed to do that if the ride's making your... If you can't feel your hands in the ride? You're setting up them for failure. Set, 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 setting them up for failure. I'm a little bit stuttered. Just a little bit. Mission Space may blast you out of this world, but it's World Showcase that sets the stage for Disney's most ambitious spectacle, Illuminations. Dead. Why'd they have to kill Illuminations? It was cool. And it was old. It was around for a long time. That's uh, helped again. It's not only a story, but a significant amount of effects that I think are done exceptionally well. Thousands they always say that. Every fire, every Disney fireworks show, they're like, "Yeah, our fireworks show has a story," and I never get it. I never get the story. I I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting. Is the story is that it explodes and it's loud. Massive That's the story. Blinding flame you don't need anything else. An enormous spherical television. This nighttime extravaganza packs them in for every show. Good way to put it. It's how Epcot ends its day. I think Illuminations is certainly one of the largest shows we've ever done. It's one of the most technically complicated shows we've ever done. Wired to detonate, the barges containing the show effects are floated onto the lagoon <laughs> each day. The first barge we take out is the Earth floating. Honestly. It weighs approximately 350,000 pounds. That wouldn't surprise... Something similar to that wouldn't surprise me. With 15,500 miniature video screens, it's the only reason they're not is because it's in, <laughs> it's in the World Showcase and not the, and not the area where the Marvel explodes. ride is. The video on the Earth globe is very, very new. No but by God, if they change that the shit, that would be a Marvel fireworks show for sure. In the center of it all, the Inferno Barge, packed with 4,000 gallons of liquid propane. This got this this caught fire recently. I just remember from watching this. This recently caught fire and like ex didn't explode, but you know. This fiery monster it was, it is was flaming, to explode, but it shouldn't have been. But only on cue. Each of the nozzles that you can see behind and around me are different types of effects. They might have a mushroom cloud come out, or the nozzles right behind me are mushroom a straight cloud? impinging jet. Even if that is a term for it, I'm not sure if that's Hopefully, the phrase you want to be using. Fun that goes with the I think I think night that, that could give people the, the wrong last idea. Thing they see and what we've always called it is a kiss good night. A kiss good night. That's not weird. <laughs> but Epcot is still only the beginning. That's Coming basically what next, the fuck they do. Disney goes to the movies. And thrill rides become the name of the game. And later, lions, tigers, and... Oh, they're, they're cutting it up into different... Uh, when we come back.
Yeah, there's like Come 15. There's John like 15 West. minutes for each uh, park. Okay. Sinberger as he explores our great country to see how we've got it made in America. Next week, Johnson, Vermont, home of Johnson Woolen Mill. We got it made in America. Factory uh -huh. has created classic clothes since 1842. And Valencia, California, where Remo bangs out their world Remo. famous drums. Find out how they've kept the beat going for nearly 50 years. We're Remo. What you like are the ones. Tuesday at 9 on the Travel Channel. Remo keeps the house clean with the magic. Only Clorox cleanup spray has Clorox bleach God, to remove sucks. set in stains like this that other spray cleaners can't. Mama's got the magic of Clorox. Hey, Crazy how that consultant. shit just sticks in your head, huh? Only by your needs. Gee, that's refreshing. A.G. A.G. Edwards. What? What does that advertise? For a great fit and strong long hold, fix it in and forget it. Bottle that up. No! I hate when they fucking put the same one on twice in a row. Why? Set in stains like this. That other spray Not why? Who? Isn't there someone there to prevent this? Oh no! Oh no! Is this Give Kids the World? A vacation village near Orlando that's no! Oh no! Come on! It's called Give Kids no! The world. <laughs> it brings a week of joy to children with life-threatening illnesses. Yeah. <laughs> So if <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> if you don't know what this is, which I imagine you probably don't, uh, give give kids the world. It's like a free little mini resort in Orlando, just for the Make a Wish kids. It's free. You don't your parents don't gotta pay. There's like everything there they could need or want or anything. But again, it's all for the terminally ill children, <laughs> so it, there's something inherently a little bit sad about it. <laughs> and it's absolutely free for their families. Call but give kids I, but the I didn't know Give Kids the World was just old. Help give them a time to remember. I thought it was uh, more recent than that. Mr. Hmm. Murphy, Ed McMahon. <laughs> uh, we're starting up the uh, neighborhood watch in this area, and yeah, here's all. Uh, Stevie. Get down here, please. No, we're just here. Just, just five, six, seven, eight. I thought he was going to make the kid attack him. That's, uh, that's really cute. Help play a part in the safety of your community. To find out how you can start or join a neighborhood watch, log on to USA on Watch. <coughs> and you're not, the, you're, you're, <coughs> you're not the only one in the resort. There's a bunch of terminally ill kids. <laughs> like, they have a whole little, like, neighborhood of little houses for the parents for the parents and the families to stay in. It's really popular, because they're always sending the Make-A-Wish kids to Disney World. That's why it's there. Oh, fuck. After this, fuck. Hang on. After this, I kind of want to... Let me, let, let me make a note of it. Firstly, what the fuck was this? What is this? What is this supposed to mean? Help play a part in the safety of your community. To find out how you your child dancing is an imperative watch, part of the USA neighborhood watch. Watch, watch. Is that what that means? Destination USA. Only on the Travel Channel. Walt Disney World. Once just a magic kingdom, <laughs> it made Epcot a household word. Then, in 1983, the very foundations of the Disney company were shaken. Declining profits, hostile corporate takeovers, the future of Walt Disney World suddenly looked bleak. The Disney theme parks and the Disney Corporation was very non-edgy. It was corporate <laughs> business. They were struggling. They were trying to do that was kind of, Okay, that's kind of funny. <laughs> it's funny to say non-edgy and show the perfectly smooth vehicle. <laughs> Very non-edgy. It was corporate business. They were struggling. They were trying to redefine the whole company. And the parks were suffering oh, Jim because Matt of it. Brody. The early 80s was probably I one of the rockiest times for the Disney me, company. Like we finished Epcot. While it morphed quite a bit in what we delivered there, it was still something that was 
in the, the table that Walt had left us of things to do. But now here we were with no great dream that Walt Disney had left. When Michael Eisner became CEO in 1984, he took the mouse by the ears. Things were going to change. <laughs> Michael Eisner and the entire staff... Listen, the that's as edgy really as they can get. Said, the the they can't go much further than the Indiana Jones ride. Let's do this, let's do that. And they did. Like, it's Indiana Jones and Twilight Zone. They can't go beyond that. Their new Walt Disney World needed a facelift. Oh, I see. The obvious choice? Another theme park. Plans were already on the table for that a new funny Epcot rat Pavilion. named Meisner. It was based on the movies. The idea became so compelling and so exciting that pretty much everybody said, this is an idea that's much bigger than one attraction or, or one pavilion. So the magic of Hollywood would come to Orlando in Disney's next theme park. We were trying to go for a combination of sort of working studio <laughs> and the Hollywood that everybody thinks was but really never was there, the sort of dream of Hollywood. On the other side of town, another entertainment giant started muscling in on Disney's turf. Uh, a lot of people think that oh, when Universal they come. Studios decided to build and announce a studio here in Central Florida, that Disney reacted and said, oh my gosh, we have to build a studio. Well, in reality, Disney had already been working on one. They had Liars. <clears throat> I need you to know they're fucking lying. It's the only reason what is now known as Disney's Hollywood Studios exists is because Universal Studios was being developed in Orlando and Disney saw that and they were like, whoa, 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 wait, no, 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 we got movie rides, we, 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 got, we got movie rides, you don't gotta go to that park, we got movie rides here. Yeah, we got movie rides at home, don't worry about it, you don't gotta, you don't gotta go. Just, just Add stay it on here. The back burner for a while, then they put it on the front burner. The race was on. Yeah, what that means is... It was on the back burner for a while, then they put it on the front burner. That means it was on a list of p hypothetical ideas they could do, and when they saw what fucking Universal was doing, they were like, "Ah, oh, shit! In May of 1989, they were like, ruh ro MGM Studios. ruh ro Ricky Rouse! Rides, shows, and a working production studio. At the time, when Disney MGM Studios opened, they don't produce it shit probably the and most anymore there, by the way. Theme park ever. No more production. Everything was very, very mm -hmm. strong. In the race to open first, major attractions were left on the drawing table. The park was too small, and the public yeah. wanted in. When the park yeah, and because they were in such a rush to build it to beat Universal, it fucking sucks, and still sucks to this day. There has never been a point in time when that park was good. That's why they had to put the Star Wars shit in there. Because they were like, uh, the, the, people like Star Wars. Get them get in. First open, Star we had two rides, the great movie ride and then the backstage studio tour featured Catastrophe Canyon. Wanted in. When the park first opened, we had two rides, the great movie ride, dead. ride and then the backstage studio tour. Dead. Both dead. Not there. The thing is, Uni Universal didn't have anything in particular they were scared of. They... It is mostly carried by the Harry Potter shit these days, and they didn't. Re they weren't really scared of anything in particular. They were just scared of someone coming in at all, because at that point they were basically the only big theme park in the area. Like I think Bush Gardens might have been around, but that was more of like a little uh, botan botanical garden, more of a botanical garden than a theme park at that point. They just didn't want any competition there was only at all. One way to expand. One thing that was lacking, and the entire property was lacking at that time, were thrill rides. But did Disney have Star Wars? Paul Grish. I know Star Wars. Star Wars ET. What? What it takes to thrill the next generation? What you say? In the early 80s, that was Star Wars ET. India. Okay, that this this is they're just saying what was popular. In, in the 80s. I was, I was, for a second I thought they were saying there was E.T. shit at, <laughs> at, you, at, at Disney World, which is like, no, that is not where the E.T. shit is. <laughs> the E.T. shit's in the other park. Jones, and our company was not in touch. E.T. ride, by the way. Still alive. They haven't killed it. It's still around. No reason for it still, to still be around, but it is. Whatever. The young uh, 
uh, people were at that time. So I went to management and I said, we really need to get involved with George Lucas. And it was sort of like hair. No, it's in, a, it's in the Orlando, Orlando Park. Might also be in the California one. I don't know. Finally, there was a meeting of the minds. Disney sat down with George Lucas. And George said, you know, if I wasn't able to do it on my own... <clears throat> George Lucas said, I'll whore out my characters for a penny. The only company that I'd want my product in would be Disney, because I think both of us have a recognized leadership in the type of products we do. And we thought that the idea of taking the George Lucas Star Wars characters and that kind of adventure thing and re sort of spinning the exterior so it felt like it was more of a movie set would be a perfect addition. Fun fact, Star Tours is identical, or was, I think they might have changed it, at one point was identical to another park in Walt, to another ride in Walt Disney World. Exact same ride system, exact same movements, all that was different was the, uh, was the video. And they said, whatever, we'll just make a new video, and just put it on. And then they killed and then they killed the original body wars and now all that remains is this to this part Star Tours the husk the first motion of the troop ever created by integrating Tours was the first motion simulator wait am I get my day Tours was the first motion simulator ride oh, well, did body wars steal Star Tours? Okay, now I'm now I'm now now I now I don't feel confident. Body Wars Star Tours. Body Wars was after uh, <coughs> Star Tours. Twenty two months, huh? I thought Body Wars came first. We are all learning and growing every day. Ever created. By integrating film and motion simulation, visitors are transported into the I, gu I guess it's not a husk of the truth. I, gu I guess it's I guess it's just the truth. World of Star Wars. Star Wars. Remember the trench shot and the Paul first Star Wars film. And everyone in the audience, you know, was right there. And, and everyone in the <coughs> everyone in the know, audience the clapped because they love Star Wars. Yes. Tours was a hit. Ah, honestly, I want to say game. yes but for the motion topic. simulator thing, but that's honestly more of Universal Studios bags. <laughs> like Universal Studios are the um, are the people who'll put a fucking motion simulator out for anything. Like uh, <laughs> Universal Studios has a Jimmy Fallon motion simulator ride <laughs> for some reason. Disney's problem is they just like they don't like to do, to do t Yes, yeah, basically. It's called uh it's called Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon and you have to like get to his show in time, I think. Um I I've, I've never been on it. I don't like the motion simulators. They make me a little bit ill. Um What Disney does more than the uh, motion simulator is they just don't like to do animatronics anymore or like big backgrounds they just want to do screens they just want to project a screen on something that makes it look animated and like shit and not an actual you know 3d thing we looked at, at other kinds of thrill experiences that exist. which is mostly the reason why i was upset for the, about the closure of a uh, splash mountain I don't give a shit about the story or anything. I like get it out of here, whatever. I'm upset because I know that all of those, you know, fully modeled furred animatronics are just gonna be fucking scrapped for some little frog with a screen for a face with its little eyes on it, little L L C D eyes on it. It just bothers me in the world and one was a free fall kind of attraction we thought how could you take that kind of experience and <laughs> yeah a story around it e fucking exactly and how would that story make sense in a movie theme park and i love when they're and like we decided to take uh, the layer of the twilight jaws click when they move and you can like hear every hydraulic joint love that there's a charm to that years of design testing and construction led to 
the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. This colossal attraction dominates the skyline at the Disney MGM Studios. It's one of the most intricately themed... Take a good hard look. Because it's... It's on its fucking way out. I swear to God, I've been saying this for years. But the Tower of Terror is not going to be the Tower of Terror for much longer. Because you know what they did to the Tower of Terror in California? They turned it into Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. What? What the fuck are you, what, what are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, why? Like, I know... I, I, the Twilight Zone is an IP as well. So it's not, it's not, I don't know, it's just what the fuck does it have to do with anything? At all? <laughs> like, wh why? <laughs> and mechanically complicated rides at any park. The moment you walk into the park, it's... Like, it's based on an elevator system. Why would you get rid of the only elevator thing about it? And when the doors pop open and you hear guests screaming, you know, that's an attraction I want to ride. No, I don't. That, again... These drop towers make me fucking sick. I do not like them. Visitors enter the I don't like that feeling of your stomach of going up hotel. and down. It's ugh. their next stop, the Twilight Zone. Oh, there you are. We've been expecting you. One Halloween night in 1939, something amazing happened. Five guests were traveling in an ordinary elevator uh, when an unbelievable phenomenon happened. A lightning bolt struck the tower. And the elevator disappeared. These five people forever transfixed into the Twilight Zone. This, as you may recognize, is a maintenance service elevator. Still in operation, waiting for you. We invite you me? to dare to step aboard. Waiting because for me? You are the star. Me, I'm the star. Wow. The Twilight Zone. Here's something else. Hang on. Now I also remembered this, and it made me pissed off. Yeah, they used to have this. They used to have this awesome fucking advertisement right in the middle of, like, uh, the road you take to get to the park for the ride. And this bit moved. It, like, it like shook around a little bit. It was fucking awesome. And then they killed it. They just took it out for no reason. And, yeah, doing the drop tower with a plot is really cool. Uh, the thing about uh, Tower of Terror is it's not just a drop tower. It's act it is actually part dark ride, because it does pass through a couple of sets at one point. The elevator, like, instead of just going up and down, it starts moving forward at one point. So it's very, very, uh, very, uh, very interesting ride, very fun ride. Not, not my thing. I don't like heights. I don't like to get... I don't like to have a tummy ache. Sorry. The boiler room. We are pleased that out of all the hotels in Hollywood, you chose to stay with us. An abandoned elevator. A motor that's seen better days. Sounds like a horror film. And it is. Please, do enjoy your stay. The lift a Be funny if as those doors were closing, this just fucking nose caught, got caught. He was like, oh shit! My fucking my care my character my broke my broken character no going to come down. Spooky apparitions appear. They are only a distraction for what lies ahead. Suddenly the doors open and you are thrust forward. No elevator has ever done this before. Yeah, see what I mean? Starts going on the track. A moment of silence, and then. <laughs> the insidious.
This elevator is unlike anything ever created. Until now, Disney has never allowed cameras into the heart of this beast, the elevator shaft. This is one of the lifts that I'm will... surprised they didn't mention it, but uh, the drops and going up to the elevator, the ups and downs of the elevator. If I recall, I think at one point, I think they still are, but they definitely at one point, they were completely random. It was uh, RNG deciding them. Take you up and down at a very high rate of speed. This is where the big piece of this attraction is located. During the drop, riders descend at a stomach-churning rate of more than 1,900 feet per minute. The lift is actually dropping at a higher rate of speed than gravity. So we're pulling it down quicker than that, which means that everything is basically floating as you are moving down. This elevator doesn't stop there. See, how is that? That doesn't sound fun to me. That just sounds like I'm going to fucking vomit. <laughs> Drops its victims over and over. You never know how yeah. many times yeah, you're random, yeah. Because of the computer programming that we have with this ride, we've been able to change that as the years have gone by. Where now we have multiple drops that take place every time the guests experience the ride. We just went on the Tower of Terror twice because it is just so much fun. It picks you up and it drops you. It picks you up and it drops you, and you just never know when it's going to end. It's really cool. Yeah, not my idea. With the of fun, of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, <laughs> Disney MGM Studios became the Walt Disney World Park for thrill junkies. Wow, didn't even enough. talk about uh, up next, an explosion. It picks you up and it drops. Tower. Didn't even talk about the rock and roller coaster. Kind of surprised. Tower of Terror. Coming up next, an explosion of growth. Animal Kingdom, yeah. <gasps> Monkey! <laughs> when we come back. Mm, fast <sighs> no, I don't, don't want to watch this again. Clorox cleanup. No! Sales like this don't happen every day. Just Thursday through Monday. Take advantage of some incredible savings during the spring savings event at your neighborhood Sherwin Williams store. Save 30% on all our high quality paints and stains, including Everclean and Super Paint in our plastic twist. So much paint to huff at Sherwin Williams. On all wallpaper too. For five days only, one but only five days. You can only huff the paint sale. for five days. So hurry in. Ask how? Ask now. Ask Sherwin Williams. Mother's Day is coming up. Spring no, it's not. To go. Steinmart. It's a great place to buy gifts. <laughs> I'm going to Steinmart for my mom's Mother's Day. Well, it's a Travel Channel documentary, so I think it's kind of just the general low IQ population. <laughs> and hopefully someone will I go guess. there for me. This would make a wonderful Mother's I don't know. Day who watches the Travel Channel? I would love a Mother's my mom like in 2006? I don't know. Find something really special for your mom. Absolutely. But what if she's hard to shop for? Give them a panache gift card. They will love you. Steinmart. Once you go, you get Isn't it. Isn't Steinmart like Walmart like for clothes? <laughs> And thus, such a difference. The lead is what gives it that vibrant color. It inspired me. Olay Daily Facial. <laughs> daily facials, you say? Condition. Hmm. Like a little bit of a facial. Yeah? Every day. A little bit of a facial every day? They say change is good. I say change is great. Olay Daily Facial. Love it's not change if you're getting them every day. Stop it! Stop showing me the fucking Clorox commercial. Come on, Joey, let's go. Hey, Mom, I got my coat. <laughs> Overwhelmed by stuff? You're not alone. This is the dump and split room. This is where you come in and dump and then you split. It's time for a clean sweep. You have to choose the things that are you, not the excess that we create around ourselves. This is like less depressing hoarders. Clean sweep. Rehabilitating America's pack rats. Yeah, that's exactly what it says. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's exactly how you would advertise a less depressing hoarders. Clean sweep, helping America's pack rats. God, these fucking marketing people, man, they really know what they're doing. And it's scary. I love I love the tiny commercials. Found these over by the stairs. Okay, thank you. Are those breast implants in his Already. hands? 
Glove handles. Lots of people lose them taking the stairs instead of the escalator. That, yeah, that was like one of those, uh, you know, be healthy, love your government ads. But like love, comma, your government ads. Not love your government, but love, comma, your government. You don't really see those ads anymore, do you? Like, they remind me of those, uh, you know, the house hippo ads. Where it's like, don't believe everything you see on TV. You don't, you don't have those anymore. Maybe I'm just not watching the right channels. Come on, man. AIDS has killed more children worldwide than there are in all the grade schools in New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Washington, Atlanta, and Miami combined. Awesome. Thanks. The time to do something is now. The place is apathyislethal.org. Million visitors come to Vegas each year. The secret to get By Disney's 25th birthday in 1996, Orlando was the theme park capital of the world. Yeah, and they did that as well. For the 25th birthday, they put an overlay on the castle that turned it into a big cake, and that also made people mad. <laughs> Because they were like, I, I saved up for 15 years for my Disney World vacation to get a picture of me in front of the castle. And what the fuck have you done with it? Why did you do this to it? And that was an actual complaint people had. had moved in, very, very common success. one. Walt Disney World was still <laughs> number one, and Michael Eisner wanted to keep it that way. In January of 1990... Uh, Eisner oh, announced Eisner. the Disney Decade, and people kept saying, what is a Disney Decade? Well, it was his effort to reinvent the theme parks. Step one, keep people on Disney property. Disney's taken a huge initiative in, in the last 10 or, or more years to build more hotel rooms. Circuit they City! Realized millions of people were coming to Orlando, and Disney was the reason most of them were coming to Orlando. And, and this they is were too south off too. property. Walt Disney World added a your hotels are fucking expensive. Hundred hotel rooms. To Eisner, the designs were crucial because he always said, uh, uh, "If you go to see a bad movie or bad TV program, after two days you forget about it. But if you design a bad building, it's going to be sitting there, and they'd be staring at it for a long time." Like the lands in the parks, Disney themes their resorts. We don't want to just build regular hotels like matchboxes. Uh, they'll be so boring. We want to make sure every hotel will have its own architectural character. We make hotels for giraffes. Style. Fanatics for detail, Disney mocks up every room design. Once we know, uh, you know, the model room works, the rest of 500 or 1,000 rooms will work as well. When the latest resort is completed, they'll have close to 30,000 hotel rooms which surprisingly is about as half as many hotel rooms as are in all of <laughs> New York Yeah, City. a bunch of them uh, a bunch of them are connected so to the monorail. Theme parks it's like a whole little Disney's loop of the monorail resorts. Hotel rooms were only part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> a host of new attractions were added to entice people to spend even more time yeah. in Walt Disney World. Guess which resort is really expensive and which one is really cheap? Hint, the one that's really cheap does not have the train running through it. It's the football one. Walt Disney World has expanded over the years in a variety of different ways, and probably the biggest reason is we wanted to become an all-inclusive destination experience for our guests. Now more and more parks are starting to try to do the same thing. They are learning from Disney that building hotels and building retail helps keep people on your property. Yeah, but Disney has like 20 hotels. That seems like Michael overkill. Michael Eisner had something else up his sleeve. Monkey! The there he is! There he is! There he is! Joe, Joe Rody! Remember I was talking to you? Uh, Joe Rody, here he is! See how he kind of looks like the guy a little... Not really, a little, but kind of, a little bit? He's got the goatee? I'm not good with faces. 
<laughs> that we should look into doing something with animals. It would take them into uncharted territory. We're going to make a theme park the for animal animals. Kingdom. And another theme park. Not featuring animals, for animals. And BMX as bikes. As we realized that we would be asked to design something that was going to have live animals in it, we realized that there was a tremendous amount we were going to need to learn. With animals come huge risks, and Disney can never afford to fail. The concerns were that if you did something with animals, you would be in competition with zoos. And that there are so many zoos all around the country that it would be very difficult to differentiate yourself, to get people to understand that this was something that you wanted to fly down to Florida to see. At 500 acres, Disney's Animal Kingdom is a monster. The Magic Kingdom, Epcot, the Disney MGM Studios combined they fit comfortably inside Disney's fourth theme park. Building Animal Kingdom was a but new challenge for the world. That's misleading, because you hear that part, you hear that size, and you're like, wow, that must be so big. Comparatively, walking area, it's the smallest park. <clears throat> there is a, the smallest, smallest room of like walkable area in Animal Kingdom, because the vast, vast majority of those 500 acres are for the animals. You, <coughs> they, they don't give a shit about you. They, they, they trying to care about the animals. Walt Disney Company, because they'd never done it. Six years in the making, one million square feet of rock work. <coughs> yeah, send the fucking uh, of dirt. The cost? <coughs> King Louie from the Jungle Book and with the gorillas. Yeah, that'd be great. Disney's animal yeah, put him in here. Yeah. Part animal park, part theme park. This was the new beast on the block. They call it a new species of thrill park. So it was a new challenge, and they, uh, they're still trying to identify to a lot of people what it's all about. You know, it's not a zoo. It's a species of theme park that happens to deal with animals. <laughs> I think this is animal. A theme park that happens to do with animals. A, a, <coughs> a zoo. What are you are referring to is a zoo. Animal Kingdom has been a success in that it's given Disney a product to offer people that isn't Bush Gardens. In the year 2000, the Disney decade was done. Well, Eisner was able to pull it all together. And over that 10-year period, everybody was surprised, including myself, what he was able to accomplish as far as reinventing the, the parks. But the Disney decade wasn't the <coughs> end. What the Coming fuck? Up, what? Walt Disney World enters the new millennium. That's it? But what will they think of That's next? all you're saying about Find Animal Kingdom? When we return. Oh, you fucking bastards. Come along with <coughs> That made me so fucking mad. <sighs> there is, however, an entirely separate documentary on the make on the uh on Animal Kingdom, in the making of that park. Hmm. That might, that might be worth my time. With we'll John see. Ratzenberger as he explores Shut up! God. Like, that's his, like, bangs, isn't it? That's not his eye... Brows?
smile wider. New Crest Spin Brush Pro Whitening. The first spin brush with two moving heads and polishing bristles to brush away stains as it cleans for whiter teeth in 14 days. Guaranteed. Stop. Stop it. What? Stop it. To keep things separate, use Glad Press and Seal Wrap. Jim! No, it's a telecom company. Oh, okay. For the whole Tri-County region. And I sure hope that you're warm sense. in the studio. <coughs> That's the kind of uh, burn. Use glass, <coughs> press and seal vague, and back to you. happy advertisement those kind of people just have. Oh, here's Ag nice. Edwards again. Always genuine. It takes more than charts and graphs to make a good financial consultant. <coughs> AG. You need you need Ag. AG Edwards. I didn't even see the Universal Orlando logo at the bottom. I just saw Popeye walking along the hotel with a with, with a uh, suitcase, and I was like, "What? What the fuck?" Uh, well, they had. I guess they had to do something with their commercials to get people's attention. He didn't have the brand name Disney did. On June 4th, my big brother was sentenced to seven years in prison for a gun crime. Okay. That day, he sentenced me to seven years without my best friend. Okay. What's your point? When you commit a gun crime, your family pays the price. Don't commit gun crimes. Wasn't what planning on it. Was that? You be me. Hey, hot shot. Sounds like you know a lot about the game. You should put that to good use. <laughs> There are plenty of ways that you can volunteer in your community. You just need to figure out what you like to do and pass it on to others. Hmm. Show them how to kick that ball. To find out ways you can volunteer <clears throat> in your community, log on to teensvolunteer.org. I wonder if that website is still active. Do what active. you like to do. Volunteer. Great, this time try to kick the ball. Teens volunteer. Ghosts, witches, Bigfoot. Yeah, they really did. It was part of their uh, job description with the NFL. But what if there is a possibility that we are not huh. alone? There is, in fact, still a teensvolunteer.org. Might be part of our everyday lives. Truth, much like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. Hang on. Emiko Rome <coughs> launched teensvolunteer.org in May 2018 during her freshman year at Berkeley High School. But, but, but this documentary is from 2002. You just took their name. You just started piloting their corpse. Why? Perhaps you should see for yourself. Join me on Weird Travels, Monday night at 8, only on the Travel Channel. That sounds interesting. We're back with Destination USA, only on the Travel Channel. According to Amusement Business Magazine, Walt Disney World attracts nearly 40 million visitors per year. <coughs> Amusement the Big Disney Business Company Magazine sounds like a thrilling publication, doesn't it? Walt Disney Just a World real, a real page turn with that is one. the most attended amusement resort in the entire world. I wonder if that's true. For excellence, and many say their employees are no exception. I wonder if it was true at the time or even still true now. Walt Disney World does better than anyone else is service. In fact, if you think about the fact that they don't call people who visit their uh, attractions customers, but rather guests, and they try to treat them as though they are a guest in their home. Disney calls them cast members. The ranks of Walt Disney World's workforce has swelled from 5,500 to a whopping 55,000. We happen to be the largest single-site employer in the United States, and as a result of that, of course, true. there are going to be times where it's challenging to hire the cast members that we need to uh, work here. Like, what could the expectations go, what could, uh, of people who come to Disney, for I think, are probably higher than when they do anything else in, the, in their life. 
Disney is held to a higher standard because Disney started out holding itself to a higher standard. In the battle for theme park visitors, Disney can't afford to get that? lazy. You see In that? In the battle for theme park visitors, <clears throat> it's like a it's like a big bear. What's this? What's the purpose of the big bear? Disney can't afford to get lazy. Over, over there. What? In the battle for theme park visitors, they were like blocks. Oh, was that like a Fal Schwartz store? Yeah, that's what Disney that can't yeah, afford that's to get lazy. Competition is really good. I think good that's still there. You on your toes, it makes you want to go I thought all those doors closed down. It, it makes you want to run faster. The Disney company the one will in continue York to closed. expand. The what? I remember you. Oh, please. You're the useless one who used to be my to be What? Want to run faster. The Disney company will continue to expand the of course I remember you. Oh, please. You're the useless one who used to be my friend. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Stop recording your fucking Mega Man reruns on the Disney tape. Come on. Be the largest single sign <laughs> employer in the United States. And as a result of that, of course, there are going to be times where it's challenging to hire <laughs> the cast members that we need to uh, work here. The expectations of people who come <coughs> to Disney, I think, are probably higher than when they do anything else in, the, in their life. Disney is held to a higher standard because Disney started out holding itself to a higher standard. In the battle for theme park visitors, Disney can't afford to get lazy. Competition is really good because it keeps you on your toes. It makes you want to go beyond where you were before. Makes you want to build a shitty movie theme park in like uh, two years or it, less. It makes you want to run faster. The Disney Company will continue to expand because they need to expand to keep tourists coming back. We have land set aside for more hotels, even for more theme parks. We can continue to develop more theme parks, huh? for the next many decades. I think the biggest change that our guests are going to see in the future is a technological advancement. We want to use technology like a good example is FastPass. We have introduced new technology into our... Yeah, fast, yeah FastPass is great, wasn't it? <coughs> they actually, they do have Disney's all over the world. They, Disney, they do have Disneyland Paris, Tokyo Disneyland, and Tokyo Disney Sea. Hong Kong Disneyland, and I think one more. But they they all have their own shit going on. They aren't just car carbon copies of each other. Even like uh, like some of the rides are exactly the same, but the vast majority are, are different. Our parks that basically take the lines away, and guests don't have to wait in a line anymore. The technologies that are available to us today in terms of uh, display systems and motion systems and the ability to synthesize and make things seem real and, uh, are so much greater that we can literally take you anywhere. You really have limitless territory to work on because you can go wherever the imagination takes you. While Disney won't release specifics about future plans for Walt Disney World, one thing is certain. Why wouldn't they? Whatever they are, they will... Because every time they fucking say what they're going to do in advance, they don't do it. I am the one thing that no other theme park on Earth can duplicate. The philosophy Mouse. and tradition of Walt Disney. The belief system and the heritage and tradition that Walt left us was something that is we very, have very positive Mouse. and very, very powerful, even today. Well, that had absolutely zero substance to it whatsoever. I know, I, why, I always go into these expecting ever gonna be like this. something, really, never, never will and be I and get nothing. Never even approach it. Every time, and I just keep coming back. Thanks, Lightship Entertainment. Thanks, Travel Channel and Disney World. <laughs> yeah, you need to read the uh, um, 
amusement business journal or whatever the fuck. That's that's where you get the good shit. Yeah, there's Disney parks in like uh There's Disney parks in California, Florida, Tokyo, Paris, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. So they got a whole bunch of them out there. And they're all different, so you gotta go to every single one. Or else you're not a true Disney super fan. Whoops. Don't look at my Danganronpa music. I'm just using it for background music. Uh, this was fun. It's been about a little over an hour and a half. I think I might call it here. Uh, meh, meh. I could play some Pokemon Showdown. Mm, nah, I don't think. No, 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 no. I need to do some other shit first. Um, so thank you so much for coming and checking this out. Hey, Booby, I love to see you here. Uh, thanks for coming and hanging out and, you know, watching this shitty documentary with me. Uh, yeah. If there's anyone else here, I've come to realize that whatever it says in here is pretty fucking inaccurate. Um. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. This was, so, this was a lot of fun. It's always fun to be here. I'll be back on Sunday about probably about the same time. I think I might do some GeoGuessr on Sunday. I think I'm gonna bite the bullet and get the GeoGuessr subscription I want. Because I think that could be for some fun stream content. Okay. Alright. Thank you everybody. Have a good night. Don't forget to have a magical Disney day, everybody. Yay!